Leslie Hervey, interim clerk. Alicia Rees, Vice President of the Hamilton County Commission. Good afternoon. I'm County Commissioner Denise Treehouse. Jeff Aluto, County Administrator. Mike Freeman, the Executive Thank you all. Stephanie Summerall, Dumas President of the Hamilton County Board of Commissioners. Uh, we will start as we always start um, with a silent prayer. And when we complete that, if you, if you could please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. With prayer. Amen. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. I'd like to make a motion to approve the minutes of the previous session. Second. Commissioner, Commissioner Summer Dumas? Yes. Commissioner Reed? Yes. Commissioner Driehaus? Yes. Thank you so much. Um, I don't know if Aunt, oh, he just came in. So we will, uh, Mr. Knapp is here. So we'll start in the order of our presentations. Um, we have several today. Uh, the National Public Safety Telecommunicators Week is our first one. See, I had moved it because I didn't think you would make it come. Yeah, you certainly can come up, yeah. And um, proclamation uh, recognizing April the 10th through the 16th of this year, National Public Safety Telecommunications Week. Um, whereas emergencies can occur at any time that require police, fire, or emergency medical services. And whereas when an emergency occurs, the prompt response of police officers, firefighters, and paramedics is critical to the pr protection of life and preservation of property. And whereas the safety of our police officers and firefighters is dependent upon the quality and accuracy of information obtained from citizens who telephone the Hamilton County Communications Center. Whereas public safety telecommunicators are the first and most critical contact our citizens have with emergency services. And where, whereas public safety telecommunicators are the single vital link for our police officers and firefighters by monitoring their activities by radio, providing them information and ensuring their safety. They are the rarely seen, but always heard professionals <laughs> that provide the calm voice that help to mitigate critical situations in our community. Whereas public safety telecommunicators of the Hamilton County Communication Center have contributed substantially to the apprehension of criminals, suppression of fires, and treatment of patients. This work exacts a cumulative toll on the mental well being of our employees. And whereas each dispatcher has exhibited compassion, understanding, and professionalism during the performance of their job in the past year. These professionals have worked countless hours beyond normal expectations with the common goal of making sure our 911 calls are answered professionally and in the most expeditious manner possible. They continue to play a vital role in working through the day-to-day -day traffic as well as the worldwide pandemic. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed that the Board of County Commissioners of Hamilton County, Ohio, gives due recognition to the Public Safety Telecommunicators of Hamilton County Communications Center for their dedication and outstanding service to the community and extends their respect and gratitude for the service they render to Hamilton County. Be it further proclaimed that the Board of County Commissioners of Hamilton County, Ohio does hereby proclaim the week of April the 10th through the 16th, 2022 as National Public Safety Telecommunicators Week and it's signed by all of our commissioners. Congratulations. Thank you. You've all been incredibly supportive of us over the last, you know, 18 to 24 months as we all worked through the pandemic. Um, but but especially th this is a, is a is a token that I will take back to our employees and, and let them see that uh, that you understand the type of work that we're doing, how critical it is. You know, they had to modify their behavior 
um, not just to protect themselves, but also to protect each other. I mean, the last thing in the world we wanted during a pandemic was to have our entire workforce decimated by this, um, you know, by this um, virus that would then and, and further endanger the rest of our citizens when we couldn't answer their calls uh, for emergency calls. And um, this type of job is not for everyone. Um, there are very few of, and I'm going to, I'm proud to say us, uh, because I still do it. There are very few of us that, that are able to, to work this as long as I have in you know, 30 years that I started with the county in 1988, um, because of exactly as you said, there is, a, there is a, a certain mental toll that is taken because you hear things that you really shouldn't hear um, and hear things that you can't unhear in your mission to try to assist the citizens as quickly and, and as professionally as possible to get the first responders on the scene. And, um, and that's the, the number one priority. And despite the, just like everywhere has the staffing issues, um, we suffer from that. As you all well know, I've kept you posted on, on the, uh, the, the critical nature of our work and the critical staffing levels that we uh, currently, unfortunately, have. And uh, yet, nonetheless, the, the, the women and men there at, at, at my department um, continue to make personal sacrifices uh, to make sure that those calls are answered as quickly as possible. So I'm very proud of each and every one of them of working through this. Um, I'm very thankful to you for helping us work through this and providing us the resources that we need to be successful um, as a department. There, there's no question in my mind that you can uh, directly tie back the quality of life to our communities based on the type of professional services that you provide in those, in those absolute critical services, uh, such as the 911 system. And, uh, and I, I offer sincere uh, thank you uh, for everything that you've done for us and, and continue to do. And uh, we'll work, we will get through this, uh, but I'm very appreciative for the recognition. Thank you. Well, thank you so much. This is just a small token of our appreciation. Looking forward to the expansion of the 911 facility. Also. We have 40,000 square feet of appreciation yes, coming yes, very soon. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll come up and take a picture with you. That'd be, that'd okay. Be great. The three, thank you so much. Thank you. And Bridget pointed, Bridget pointed out, I, and I neglected to mention that um, that is a photograph of, of Bethany Daniels. Uh, Bethany Daniel was uh, uh, selected as our dispatcher of the year. She's a relatively young employee with less than four years of service, yet uh, she has been um, one of our absolute cheerleaders who has been enthusiastic. She is encouraging of everyone else. She's taken on additional roles to help train folks, which is, is a challenge in and of itself. And uh, nonetheless, every day has that, that exact smile you see um, is not something she just did for the photograph. That's actually, that's her, her nature, her personality. That's every day. And, um, and we're very proud of Bethany. And I just wanted a quick second oh, okay. to, to spotlight her. So that's thank awesome. you. Thank, thank you. you. Uh -huh. I just before you leave, Andy, I just want to um, say thank you. And, you know, it occurs to me that sometimes when we're out in the community, especially with students, and they don't really understand what county government does, uh, one of the most obvious things that we do is your, the service that you guys provide. You know, everybody wants somebody to pick up that phone when they're dialing 911. And so there is an, a certain expectation and you and your team have always lived up to that expectation, even through a pandemic. So we are very, very grateful for your service. Thank you very much. And we're th those exact young people. We're hiring. We are always hiring. This is a wonderful career-oriented opportunity. Um, it's been a wonderful career for myself, for my wife, and for many other coworkers. Um, you know, it's it's uh, it, it's a vital function. It's not for everyone, for, but for those who are able to do it, it's been an absolute wonderful career, um, a very fulfilling career for me. Oh, Vice President. Yes, I, I just wanted to uh, also join and say thank you, and thank you to all those that work there. I got a chance to do the tour and I'm glad that we're going to be having a, a new facility uh, with the new technology and all of the bells and whistles because we want to have the best environment as 
uh, the individuals are taking these life and death calls. But I wanted to just highlight yourself because um, the, when, when we, if we're short of staff or, or we're getting uh, overflow of calls, you're not the type of director to say, oh man, give it to somebody else. You take off, I mean, you got the suit on today, but you take that jacket off, you roll up your sleeves and you get to work yourself too. And I just wanted to highlight that because I think that uh, says a lot about you, uh, says a lot about uh, being a leader of the team when they see the director is willing to roll up their sleeves and get busy. It also inspires others. And so I just wanted to, to tell you that, to say that publicly, uh, the type of director uh, that, that you are, uh, you're a hands-on person. And, uh, you know, like you said, if you got to answer phones yourself to save a life, you're willing to do that. And just want to say, we really Thank appreciate you. that. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you all. Okay. We will move forward. We have a couple more proclamations and this month is National County Government Month. Counties thrive in Hamilton County. Aware as the nation's 3,069 counties, parishes and boroughs serving more than 315 million Americans provide essential services to create healthy, safe, and vibrant communities. And whereas counties provide public health services, administer justice, keep communities safe, foster economic opportunities, and much more. Whereas Hamilton County, Ohio, and all counties take pride in our responsibility to protect and enhance the health, well-being, and safety of our residents in efficient and cost-effective ways. And whereas under the leadership of the National Association of Counties, President Larry Johnson, NACO is demonstrating how counties thrive especially in supporting residents and businesses during the coronavirus pandemic. And whereas each year since 1991, the National Association of Counties has encouraged counties across the country to elevate awareness of county responsibilities, programs, and services. And whereas Hamilton County's Board of County Commissioners have also demonstrated how counties thrive in supporting our residents and businesses through the coronavirus pandemic, as well as developing long-term resources to assure success during this time of recovery and rebuilding. Therefore, now it be proclaimed that the Hamilton County Board of Commissioners encourage all county officials, employees, schools, and residents to participate in county government celebration activities, be it further proclaimed that the Board of County Commissioners of Hamilton County, Ohio, does hereby proclaim April 2022 as National County Government Month. And it's signed by all the commissioners. So that's good. Thank you. Thank you so much. And we have one additional proclamation, National Lineman Appreciation Day. Hello. Hello, commissioners. Yeah, this is such an honor. Uh, just the thought of going up higher than two or three feet for me. It's like, um, just as I was saying earlier on our other proclamation, are you, are you actually a lineman? So I was, so you okay. always are. Okay. Uh, got a little age on me. Okay, so but that's okay. Yeah. And thank you so now much. For the queen cake. Yes. Uh, you know, work on the polls and uh, okay. provide uh, like the county. Fantastic. John's being humble. He's the director of our Queensgate Operations Center, and he leads a, a large team there that keeps the lights on in the city and the county and uh, does a great job. And, you know, I just really appreciate this day to be able to celebrate right. them, all of our line workers, men, women, all who serve. Um, they just do an amazing job keep the lights on. And, and so I'm sort of going out of order. I'm supposed to read the proclamation first, but I'm just, uh, I would think linemen are, are basically humble people. I mean, to get up there and do what you need to do and take your life in your own hands. So uh, let me read the proclamation and then I'll let our other commissioners um, speak to it. This is a proclamation recognizing Duke Energy linemen for their extraordinary service in Hamilton County. Whereas the profession of Duke Energy Lineman is steeped in personal, family, and professional tradition. And whereas Duke Energy Lineman are often first responders during storms and other catastrophic events, 
working to make the scene safe for other members of public and safety officials. And whereas these brave men and women work with thousands of volts of electricity high atop power lines 24 hours a day, 365 days a year to keep electricity flowing. And whereas Duke Energy linemen must often work under dangerous conditions far from their families to construct and maintain energy infrastructure throughout the state of Ohio and the United States. And whereas Hamilton County thanks Duke Energy linemen for their extraordinary service, daily and during severe weather and other impacts to Hamilton County. Therefore, now it be it proclaimed that the Hamilton County Board of Commissioners honors Duke Energy linemen for their excellent service to the citizens of Hamilton County, be it further proclaimed that the Board of County Commissioners of Hamilton County, Ohio does hereby proclaim the 18th day of April, 2022 as National Lyman Appreciation Day and it's signed by all our commissioners. Thank you for all you do. President Reese, would you like to make I just wanna say thank you uh, for, for your service. And I think a lot of times, I think last night, for example, when uh, a thunderstorm uh, hit and certainly we get our text message to get prepared. And I think you'll be happy to know I got my batteries and I got my, <laughs> I got my flashlight and my batteries and I make sure my phone is plugged up. Uh, but when the lights are out uh, and people don't know where to turn, that's when, you know, the lion men and women uh, show up uh, like Spider-Man. <laughs> You're up high and you get things going uh, and get us get us back on track. And so just want to really thank uh, the lion men and women uh, who are out there in the danger while we're inside in the dark and sometimes making those calls. When are our lights going to get on? Uh, but we're but you do the work to get us back on the grid because we're off the grid when we go down. You get us back on the grid, get us back to work, get us back uh, living with the lights on. So I just want to say thank you so much for your work. Yeah, I, I also want to express my gratitude for the work you do. You know, we've been talking a lot about emergency work today. Uh, and, you know, in the event of inclement weather and storms, you guys are the ones responding to emergencies. And, you know, when you think about countries like the Ukraine, where they've had power out and no water and no food for so long, you really start to think about how dangerous of a situation that is if we don't have individuals like you doing the work and making sure that we all maintain power, um, whether it's an inclement event or, or, or something other, other than that. But um, you know, thank you for what you do. You know, you use the term souls on the polls. I've heard souls to the polls, uh, to <laughs> Commissioner Reese more than once, um, but souls on the polls, there's a whole new take on that. So, but I like the way you think about it because you obviously feel a great deal of responsibility for the individuals you're training. And, um, and we're very grateful for what you do and, and your leadership uh, in this space. So thank you. And I appreciate our willingness to go above and beyond when we go outside of Ohio. We always hear about our men and women going wherever the disaster is. So certainly appreciate that. John, I know you've Sometimes. been down to the Carolinas a couple of times yeah. with uh, different hurricanes in Florida. Mm -hmm. And even in 2008, when we had the major hurricane come inland mm -hmm. here in the Cincinnati area. So um, I just want to say a very special thanks to Madam President Sumro Dumas, Commissioner Driehaus and Vice President Reese, um, you know, for, for this honor, this recognition. I know John, you know, it takes us very personally. He's had a long career in um, being a lineman, working with the crews, leading them now. But he said on the way up here, we walked from our office at 4th and Main. He said, I'm going to take this back. I'm going to put it up on the wall and show all of our line workers, you know, what the county feels about them. So that, that means a lot. Um, I've only been in this, this role for several years, but I've got the pleasure to work with some great people at the county our EMA director, uh, we text each other quite frequently. We keep in contact. Um, the administrator, assistant administrator, Eric Beck, we work together on a variety of projects, uh, but top-notch group. And we just, this, this recognition means a, a lot to Duke Energy. So thank you. Fantastic. We're going to take a picture with you guys. Okay. Good morning.
are you sure? I'm like, we should take her. Would you guys trust me on this to send it to all you, or would you rather? Yeah, and I will. I will get the best light if I can, and then a little closer. There we go. And he and he's got that to hold. All right, wonderful. Right here. Thank you so much. Wonderful. Okay, very good. Okay, okay, thanks. Okay. Madam President, I just wanted to add real sure. quick. Um, so first of all, I very much appreciate you uh, fitting this into the board's schedule. Uh -huh. So I've been in emergency management for 22 years. And for 22 years, uh, I know the first thing I do, I do several things when I hit the ground running. One is to develop a positive relationship with the local infrastructure providers. Um, Duke Energy has been a phenomenal partner since I got here in 2015. Uh, when he says we text at all hours, we text or call at all hours. And, and uh, they are a phenomenally prepared as they can be company, mm -hmm. and they're prepared to respond and fix whatever breaks in the county. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just, you know, uh, I know Jeff and I, uh, Administrator Ludo and I text a lot during uh, large power outages. And so I'm constantly, not only is their website phenomenal, by the way, which is real-time data. So that's been a phenomenal change in, in, in power restoration process, but also just getting a clear and concise information from our contacts at Duke. Um, Chad and I work closely together. Mm -hmm. I, I talk to them from, are you doing your tree trimming to, are you ready for tonight's storm to mm -hmm. how much are you leaving here? If you're sending all these linemen to another state to respond to another disaster. And so they're just as, as a company and as people, they're phenomenal. And then of course, um, just so you know, it's not a, it's not a, it's not a one-way street. So we have helped them out a few times when they've, uh, they've had trouble accessing a facility or something like that. We've uh, partnered with our local communities to help them get access to some facilities that had some problems. Um, so it's a two-way street and it's just a phenomenal partnership. And I just uh, just can't ask for a better partner when it comes to making sure that people have the, the power they need in Hamilton County. Thank, you, thank so you so much, Nick. I appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. We will move forward uh, for public comments. I'm probably going to tear up some of these names, I can tell you already. Um, Dan. Yes, I What's your last name? It's Regalold. Regalold. Okay. Yeah. All right. Come forward. You have two minutes. Oh, I was told I'd have three minutes. Oh. Huh? I was told I'd have three minutes. Okay. Did somebody tell you that? Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay, great. We'll go with the three. I wanted to give a compliment before my time started. Sure. Can I do that? Sure. I just wanted to compliment Jeff and uh, really some great employees who have helped give me some information like Bridget over here, Lisa Webb. And there have been several others that when I've asked for things, they've gotten it to me quickly. Really appreciate it. Love the Pledge of Allegiance. Okay. So why am I here? In July 2020, a lot of elected officials around the state of Ohio passed race resolutions that really have had a, a large impact on their constituents. I live in historic Glendale. Beautiful. I think right up the road from you, uh, President Dumas. And um, in July 2020, an African-American council person on her own created a study and she found out without any public um, involvement that all 2000 citizens in Glendale were racist, implicitly biased. The mayor allowed her to send that out in an email to the entire city and the impact on the residents was terrible. Another incident I'm aware of is the state school board in Ohio in July, 2020, they passed a resolution to condemn racism and advance equity. This policy allowed the state school board to shut down all discussion at their public meetings on the subject of race. No one was allowed to even talk about it in any of their meetings. That policy was so bad that a lawsuit was filed against them. Board members were replaced. The superintendent and president of the state board of education were replaced. The new resolution they passed to replace that uh, um, racism resolution was called the Academic Excellence for All Students. Can you imagine that excellence, not race, not equity? That brings me to the resolution that you all passed in July, 2020, called the resolution that racism is a public health crisis. I've had this 
resolution sitting on my desk now for two years. And let me review a few things about this piece of well paper. Uh, Hamilton County will support health efforts that are centered on the voice of black communities. Why just black communities? Hamilton County will seek to promote racial equity policies that prioritize the health of all people, especially people of color. Why, why just people of color? So gosh, the idea of segregation that's in this resolution, it's so 1950s. Uh, let me remind you that you, just like everybody in this room, we were all born uh, with the same rights given to us by God, and that was that we're all equal. And as elected officials, it's your job to represent all races. At some point, I knew somebody was going to come, an employee or a vendor would come and talk to me about that, and that's happened. Two weeks ago, an employee in one of your departments contacted me to tell me that they were starting to be treated hostily by your management team. They feel like they're being indoctrinated because they're white. They're starting to be told to join groups of uh, of, of library clubs to read racist garbage like Ibram X. Kendi. That's the one where when you say you're not racist, that means you're a double racist, if you can believe that. Your resolution has maybe starting to open the door to a hostile work employee for counties. My message is to you is simple, don't let it happen. I don't think I need to explain to you what the words hostile workplace mean. To all the 4,270 Hamilton County employees, whether they're black, white, or whatever they are, if any of you are being treated differently because of the color of your skin, and you're starting to feel like you're, you're being treated hostily, I encourage you to contact me. My name is Dan Reginald. You can reach me at dan at empower, the letter U, america.org. And if I can help you, I will. Thank you. Thank, thank you for your comments. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, Jeff Capel. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I was at the OKI board meeting earlier today, so I thought while I'm downtown, let <laughs> come by and have a chat with you all. Um, I saw a few weeks ago, the chairman of the Cincinnati Convention and Visitors Bureau talked about how we need to get a new arena in town. Now, I knew that was coming, the second that that same organization named Jeff Birding to be their chairman. Birding didn't just walk in off a Greyhound bus and land into that role. He was specifically put there by some of the top 0.1% of Hamilton County to hit up taxpayers to build, to get us another Jeff Birding stadium or arena. Now let's note that that arena is privately owned. So if the owners of that arena want to build a new arena or substantially refurbish the current one, nobody's stopping them from doing so. They can do that anytime they want. So when, when Birding and company talk about how we have decisions to make, what they're really talking about is how much money can we loot from taxpayers to subsidize a private business. And then another thing I wanted to hit on as well is we, we all heard the comments from Phil Castellini recently, and people can interpret them however they want. I'm not even here to, to say what I, exactly what I think he may have meant by it. But I wanted to point out that that is the, 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 the tactic of stating that, you know, maybe sometime our team may land in another city. That's a common tactic that's used now when, when owners of sports teams want something. They can't use the tactics anymore of the 90s where teams would outright say, we're going to move if you don't give us what we want. People really bristle at that. So the tactic has evolved over the years to just dropping hints that things may happen if things don't go their way. I mean, it's important to point that out because as, as much as we need to understand the proven facts that stadiums do not generate new jobs, or net new jobs, net new growth, net economic development, it's equally important to understand the tactics that they use to manipulate elected officials and the public to subsidizing their private businesses. Mm -hmm. So that's what I wanted to mention and just encourage that we, we, we all stay on top of this. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Um, Bomani Tahimba, welcome. Uh, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, I'm here to uh, speak. Uh, in support of the uh, large event grant that's on the agenda that will benefit the uh, Cincinnati Music Festival. A um, little bit about myself. I hold an event that takes place at the same time as the uh, Cincinnati Music Festival. It's called Festival 513. 
uh, on Freedom Way, right in front of the, right across from the stadium. There are vendors, food vendors, general merchandise vendors, a lot of them African American local vendors as well. And th that weekend is just a great event. It really sh uh, gives Cincinnati an opportunity to shine. And um, so anything that would support that the Cincinnati Music Festival, you know, I just want to um, say that it, it, it's a great effort. And also during that weekend, um, there's going to be the inaugural event for the uh, Cincinnati Black Music Walk of, Frank, of, of Fame. And all of those events in that one location is going to create an environment where people that come to our city feel welcome, they'll have things to do. And we have an opportunity to make Cincinnati shine even brighter that weekend with all of those events that weekend. So I'm in support of the uh, large uh, event grant, and I hope you all will be as well. And also my pastor, Pastor Casey Smith of Corinthian Baptist Church, he uh, authorized me to speak on his behalf that he is also in favor of that uh, grant. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Uh, do we have anyone on? No one. Okay. All righty, we will move forward with uh, comments and motions from the commissioners. I have a few things I'd like to bring up uh, as far as what I have been doing, some of the things I've been doing. I went to Teller Elementary last Friday for the Children's Hunger Alliance and helped pass out um, meals for those uh, young people that are going to uh, spring break so they would have some food to last them. Um, and then I was part of the Reds opening day. It was fantastic. The energy was fantastic. And we knew it would be because people have been waiting forever, uh, you know, for that to happen. I also attended uh, in Forest Park. There was a historical society there and they uh, wanted me to come because the quality of life task force, which was formed in 1990 back there, I was part of the the co-founder for the Quality of Life Task Force. And they're looking at uh, bringing it, starting it again with their new mayor, uh, Mayor Aaron Brown. So they wanted to get some, some questions answered and some input as it relates to some of the things that we found that when we were there. Um, I also wore blue for uh, uh, Child Abuse Month, um, is it? Um, yeah, okay, uh, with JFS. And so a lot of JFS workers were there. Uh, Commissioner Driehaus was there and uh, we wore blue and uh, I know you were hurting a little bit at that time, Vice President Reese, so you couldn't make it over there. Uh, in addition, I um, went to the Fair Housing uh, monthly program, which is really their yearly program, um, and they talked about some uh, statistics as it relates to housing and how we can improve uh, the affordable housing, which is certainly a priority on our board. And then uh, this morning I sat, I attended the OKI meeting, really interesting, um, Ohio, Kentucky, Indiana transportation meeting. And they talked about all the monies that are going to be allocated for charging stations. Um, actually, um, they allocated, got it written down here. Um, Eric, do you remember you, here it is, I got it here. Well, we got 104 million, Ohio did. But the complete allocation is 7.5 billion from the federal government. And Ohio is getting, thanks Eric, 104 million. OKI itself is getting 3 million. Um, and it's really, um, they are really committed to it. And in addition to that, there was a young man who came up to talk about the, applic the apps that they have for OKI and how you can you know, just get on OKI. I would encourage people to do it, OKI.org and look at, where locations for charging stations should be. It also had a, um, it analyzed the safety and the trucks and the cars and where they're going and where the primary um, traffic is happening. And also, if you wanna put your address in, uh, it will analyze for you whether or not your house is a good place for a solar rooftop uh, or whether or not it's not a, a good idea. That's just a few of the apps that they have. And I, I, I found it quite, interesting. Um, we do have to pay a 20% match if we decide uh, to get some of these charging stations. And uh, that will end my report as for as activities. Vice President Reese. Thank you. Um, yes, I have some <laughs> a little knee trouble right now, but uh, hopefully everything will be going fine. 
Uh, just wanted to say that uh, last week I um, actually woke up with the uh, knee out and uh, <laughs> was able to get a shot and get to going to the National Action Network convention where I was scheduled to speak. So I um, was in New York last week, spoke at the National Action Network National Convention, um, had a chance to talk about some of the efforts that we have here in Hamilton County that people from all over the country uh, got a chance to talk about our 513 relief bus, bus efforts, uh, the efforts that we've been able to also do with some of the relief uh, dollars and uh, some of the best practices. Uh, among other things that I was able to uh, speak about. Uh, I was also able to chat briefly with uh, Secretary Marcia Fudge, who is the Secretary of HUD, and was able to uh, talk with her briefly about, obviously, the needs of bringing more to Hamilton County and also our efforts in putting together an affordable housing uh, plan and bring doing it in a collaborative way. And she seemed to be uh, very excited to see that we were collaborating um, among different groups and organizations uh, and also invited her to come to Hamilton County. So I'll be still bugging her about that. Uh, but I was just happy to be able to talk to her directly. I also was there with the uh, Secretary of Transportation, uh, uh, Pete Budapest, um, and was able to talk just briefly uh, mentioned the uh, Brent Spence Bridge. Uh, so it's always good when you've got some FaceTime, even if it's uh, not too long, but was there with them at the National uh, Action Network. Uh, at that time, we had a women's uh, empowerment luncheon that I was at with women from across the country. Um, and at that time, uh, they had to interrupt the luncheon. Uh, Secretary Fudge was there also um, as well as uh, former uh, United States uh, Senator Hillary Clinton and some others. Uh, also, the U.S. Assistant Attorney General was there, and they had to interrupt the luncheon and said, the news has come in. Judge Katanji Brown Jackson has been confirmed, and the place erupted. So you always look at where were you when the news came in, and uh, that was to be with women from all over the country. It was just uh, uh, amazing, people crying, people for joy. Uh, Hazel Dukes, who is on the national board of the NAACP, who is 90 years young, was there to see her in tears. Uh, it was just uh, an incredible experience. Uh, so wanted to, uh, to highlight that. Uh, the other thing I had a chance to uh, speak today at the 20th anniversary of the collaborative agreement. I wanna thank uh, Vice Mayor Jam, Michelle Levin Kearney for uh, inviting me. Uh, it was put together uh, by the city and Iris Rowley uh, put the, the event together. But to be able to talk about 20 years ago, and I was 20 years younger, 20 years ago, um, was very young and had to deal with a very difficult time in our city, uh, and Cincinnati is in our county. And uh, being able to talk about how we had to come together um, and bring the, the, the citizens, the police uh, together, the faith-based community, and come out with a collaborative agreement. I was the vice mayor at that time, and the mayor was out of town. And I got the call that the, the uh, discussions and negotiations were breaking down. Um, I was in my 20s and I had on a Adidas track sweatsuit because I was working out. And I just remember driving over to Xavier where they were meeting and saying, Lord, just give me the words to keep it together because I didn't want us to fall apart. And once I got there, Judge Delot then said, I kept it together. And I thought, wow, now I'm done. And she said, no, you're going to be in the negotiations until the end. And so just to be in that uh, federal court and having all of the entities, uh, the FOP, the Black United Front, the city of Cincinnati, and having to negotiate all those components and then get every civil rights group, once we got a deal, every civil rights group had to sign off on it. Also had to get FOP to sign off on it and then had to get a 9-0 vote in council and anybody knows about city council, that's a tough thing to get on a tough issue. And was able to get that done and United States 
uh, attorney general at that time, John Ashcroft, who was a Republican, came to town and signed this deal. So we had everything from Democrats, Republicans, to police, community, to activists, to city officials. And this became a model at the time. We didn't know it was going to be a model. We were just trying to bring it together and, and have a blueprint. And it became a blueprint. Um, and then my years at the state legislature, as these things started to spread across Ohio and around the country, the governor said, hey, you've got some experience. How do we have something in Ohio? And Ohio was one of the first states to have use of force standards done by an executive order. I was president of Black Caucus, and it's called the Ohio Collaborative. So um, that was uh, done today, and all the people that were involved uh, many people are still involved in making sure that our city and our county uh, is someone that works together. So that was great. And I just want to uh, commend uh, the work of Cincinnati City Council, uh, as well as uh, Iris Rowley and others who put that together uh, today. So uh, those I was in an opening day parade with uh, also uh, my colleagues. Uh, it was a great uh, parade. Uh, we had a great parade. Uh, and um, certainly uh, we're hoping to have a uh, better season. So uh, that's all my comments for the day. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Driehaus. Thank you. Uh, I'm gonna open with the opening day parade uh, because it was good fun and we were all in it. Um, the crowd was huge. You know, we haven't done it for a while. So it was exciting to be out with the people and hanging out and celebrating the Reds. Um, I actually went to the game afterwards which was a little bit less exciting uh, than the parade. Uh, it was exciting to up to a point. And then we were like, wait a minute, wait a minute, what's going on? Um, but we, we will hope springs eternal with the Reds and the Bengals. And so uh, our optimism is sometimes rewarded. So I'm continue to be optimistic about the Reds in, the, in their season, but it was just fun to be out with people and celebrating um, the iconic Cincinnati Reds on opening day. Um, I too uh, uh, went to the OKI meeting and took away also this idea of charging stations uh, because there is so much energy, if you will, behind this idea that we need to start moving into the future when it comes to vehicles um, and you know, green energy. And so we did talk about this last week very briefly about how we as a commission, um, as policymakers, need to start to think through when is the best time for us to start to convert our fleet, um, whether it's a, a engineer's vehicle or another vehicle, um, we need to start thinking through that. And I do wonder if there's some federal dollars available for not only um, the public charging stations, which is what they were talking about, and having them along, um, especially the highways, but also charging stations to the benefit of the city and the county. Uh, for our own fleet. So um, something that I, I hope we will pursue uh, because as we move forward, yeah, there, it's common. And I think we um, are gonna try to be on the, the lead when it comes to doing all things green. We've been on the lead with our facilities and I'm hoping we can get there with our vehicles as well. Um, two other things. One is that um, I, I wanna thank the administration for presenting the recommendations about the American Rescue Plan to the commission, we got, I think we got them yesterday. Uh, I'm looking forward to digging through that. And I understand we're having a Tuesday staff meeting to talk through those recommendations so that we can start to invest those dollars in the county, whether it's housing or mental health or youth development. I'm very, very excited about the opportunity that exists uh, for the, the whole community really, as we continue to have this community conversation about these investments. And I'm also wondering, Madam President, I don't know if this is on the radar, but this feels like one of those moments, often like a budget moment where we might want to um, have a public hearing to gain information from the public related to the recommendations. And so I'm just offering the idea of a public forum, uh, you know, public hearing related to the recommendations so that we can continue to gather input. We, we had those, um, the groups of individuals, really the experts help us formulate the recommendations, but I think there's probably an opportunity to increase our knowledge base by going out and doing a public hearing. So um, hopefully we can get that done um, between the time frame of you know, sometime after Tuesday, after we hear from the administration and before we need to pass anything by way of these dollars. Um, and then lastly, I was gonna talk about 
the um, historic appointment of Katanji Brown Jackson to the Supreme Court. Um, and it folds into my only announcement of the day is that uh, the pay equity commitment signing is next week. It's April 20th at 3.30 at the downtown library. And we have all received an email from Mary Mowney, who is leading the charge for the Commission on Women and Girls, asking all of us to reach out to any business, nonprofit, um, government agency that might want to sign on to the pay equity commitment. Um, and then we will have a signing that day. We're all hopefully going to be there and um, celebrate and congratulate those that were um, signing on to the commitment. I know the county is doing it and I, the city will be there as well. So I just want to put that on the radar to next Wednesday, April 20th at 3.30 at the downtown library. Thank you. Thank you so much. And we certainly can um, consider as a board uh, having more public input. As was mentioned earlier, we did have stakeholders that were intricately involved in this process of how we spend our ARP money. But as we review it, the new packet that we received, uh, we certainly can look at involving our residents because it's their money, it's our money. And we want to not only have the stakeholders involvement, what we can consider when we want to do that. Um, I just wanted to bring up, um, Vice President Reese brought up about Justice Kataji Brown and that uh, I would be remiss if I did not bring up how blessed I was to be in the hearing room on her second day of the hearing. And I had the opportunity to do that. And as I walked in the room, I could feel her pride. Her, uh, I could hear her intellect. I could also feel her strength. And I also realized it was her assignment to be the first. And I am so proud of her. Um, and uh, I just knew that it was, well, I knew it was gonna happen and just the opportunity uh, to be in the room and sit right behind her almost um, is something I'll never forget. So being the first um, commissioner and she's the first, of course, justice, uh, being the first sometimes is not easy, but I'm sure she'll be able to handle it well. Um, so I'm glad that that was finally validated what she was already assigned to do. Okay, Hello, yes. Uh -huh. Can I, I also want to acknowledge, um, I know earlier was talked about uh, uh, Pastor KZ Smith. Mm -hmm. um, I know that uh, it was said that uh, he supports uh, the music festival and Black Music Walk of Fame and all that, but I, I just wanted to acknowledge that he did uh, arrive uh, I know he's not asking to speak, but I just wanted to acknowledge his presence. Certainly, absolutely. Thank Welcome. You. Thank you for coming. Yeah. Okay, we will move forward. Um, our County Commissioner, Jeff Aluto. Um, thank you, Madam President. Uh, so uh, I've got three, no comments today, just three by leaves uh, in your packet. Um, I'll start with by leave number one. Uh, this is an item that was referenced. This is a resolution authorizing the administrator to negotiate and enter into a funding agreement by and between the Board of County Commissioners Hamilton County, Ohio and the Santangelo Group Incorporated regarding a large event grant. Um, this, as the board is very well aware, a large event grant was budgeted uh, in the 2022 general fund budget at a total amount of 1.5 million. Uh, the purpose of the grant was to provide economic support uh, for those major events in the community that, uh, that are, are hosted in the community and that drive significant economic uh, activity, economic development, and specifically tourism uh, to the county, uh, in particular, making sure those large events uh, in the community uh, are strong uh, as we emerge from the pandemic uh, of COVID. Uh, the large event grant was advertised in March. Applications were due on March the 25th. Um, we are taking these you know, many times in, for a grant. We'll wait until they're all in We'll do all the analysis, we'll do all the contracting, we'll bring them all to all in together because of the nature of this grant and because these, these events are occurring at different times, uh, we wanted to be sensitive to that and so we were bringing these forward on a rolling basis uh, to the board. Uh, so the first application that we received was from the Cincinnati Music Festival. Uh, this uh, event is occurring downtown at Paul Brown Stadium uh, and around Paul Brown Stadium, uh, July 21st to the 23rd after a two year COVID hiatus. Uh, most, in the, most everyone in the community knows this uh, as a typical annual event, um, notwithstanding a pandemic, uh, pulling in close to 80,000 attendees annually. Uh, most of those coming from outside the community, uh, anywhere from California to, to Florida. 
Uh, the grant application in particular requests $690,000, uh, 450,000 of that for performance for, for performers, 20,000 for marketing, uh, 30,000 for equipment rental, uh, 100,000 for security and staffing, 50,000 for general liability. Uh, there is support for the co-occurring uh, 513 uh, festival occurring uh, out uh, in the ancillary portions of the, of the festival down on the, on the banks at 25,000 uh, and also funding for some performances ancillary to the festival at the Black Music Walk of Fame at 15,000. So we are in the final stages of an agreement uh, with uh, the Santangelo Group on this uh, on this project, uh, the resolution before you today gives me the authority to execute that agreement consistent with the terms of the grant and the funding amounts in the grant. Um, once that agreement is uh, approved uh, to form by the prosecutor's office, which I understand is really imminent, we just don't have it today. But we wanted to move forward and get the authority to sign off on uh, that I have the authority to sign off on it so that we can execute it um, once that agreement is approved as to form. Uh, with that, I know that um, uh, the Santangelo Group's uh, represent representatives, Fran and Joe Santangelo, I believe are out of town but are on uh, Zoom today if there are any specific questions for the, uh, the event holders themselves. Also, Holly Chrisman is here if there's any questions, Assistant Administrator Holly Chrisman, if there are any questions about the specifics of the grant application process, uh, we're happy to answer those. Uh, commissioners, I'll uh, turn it to your questions at this point in time. Thank you so much for that summary and clarification. I'd like to make a few comments. Um, when we looked at the large event grant, as you were saying, we allocated 1.5 million for the grant, uh, even though the criteria came out after we had allocated the money. Uh, I had many questions, um, not, um, not about the Jazz Festival. We know it's a a great activity. People come from all over um, the state, the region to, to attend this. I've attended it several times myself, but anytime you look at $690,000, no matter who it is, uh, you have questions. And I had many, uh, many questions to make sure we were doing our due diligence as it relates to uh, the expenditures. Um, uh, I know one of the criteria is that uh, the group have an impact of at least $40 million. I like to read the whereas, uh, the fifth whereas on our resolution, um, whereas according to a study produced by a UC economic center, previous occurrences of the event have attracted up to 60,000 out of region and up to 80,000 total attendees, created up to 1,000 direct jobs and generated up to an estimated 143.9 million economic impact for the greater Cincinnati region, including significant hotel tax and sales tax revenue for Hamilton County, which the board, the Office of Economic Development and Santangelo Group fully anticipate will meet or exceed the previous occurrences of the event. I wanted to read that because the impact will be tremendous, as I said in this, whereas uh, in this resolution, and not only uh, as we look at revenue, but we look at, um, we tried to help, we did help the small businesses three times actually uh, allocated 13.5 million. This event uh, provides a social and emotional impact along with an economical impact. So I'm willing to support by leave one. Um, those are all my comments, uh, Vice President Reese. Thank you. Um, I've been attending the jazz festival, now Cincy Music Festival, uh, since I was seven years old. Uh, this festival has been around for 55 years, 55 years. Uh, it also is the number one, no matter what genre of music, number one annual economic impact for all of Hamilton County. The hotel tax that is sent to the CFA, we utilize the tax dollars. That's the people booking the hotels. We have used that for a number of other projects in Hamilton County. Uh, if you go now, most of the rooms are almost sold out in downtown Cincinnati and they're moving out to the other areas. Uh, my only thing to the hotels, I know it's been two years, but Let's don't try to make up all of it in one year. Let's keep these rates 
affordable. We don't want to go back to the days when we found rates jumping higher on that weekend than any other weekend. Uh, so let's don't do it in one year. We've got time. Uh, but this event has been down for two years, which has been suffering for us in terms of our CFA dollars coming in. And they bring in people from all over the country. It is also the oldest African-American music festival in the country. Um, and so we've got people that we have to compete with. You've got Essence Festival down in New Orleans that popped up. You've got Louisville, which is our number one competitor now. They're trying to have a music festival in their new soccer stadium. And here we were positioned as the top and number one. We don't want to lose that. We want to maintain our position as number one. We want everyone to come from all over the country to Cincinnati. We've got groups, Chicago just takes over Cincinnati that weekend. Michigan takes over Cincinnati that weekend. And the county says, cha-ching, cha-ching, cha-ching. So to me, this is, even though it says large events, this is a tourism attraction. It will tie into our uh, Black Music Walk of Fame because when people come, we can say, don't just come that weekend. Come on back. We're open 365 days a year so that we can continue to have cha-ching, cha-ching, cha-ching. My goal is to bring outside dollars as much as possible to reduce costs on local people. And so I just think this is a uh, good investment considering that we bring in $107 million a year. Um, I think that uh, we get that two times and I also think uh, not including the earned media that we get on national and international uh, acclaim. Uh, this year, we want to come in and show that we are strong. We are back. Come on in. Book these hotels. Eat in these restaurants. Small businesses, come on so we can get you some connected, connect you with some money. But the thing I like about this is that it's annual. It's not a one-time thing. And then we've got to compete to try to get it another year or 10 years from now. This is something that's every year. So uh, when we did the budget, um, I was very supportive. Uh, I wanted to put some support toward this. Uh, that's one of the reasons all of us uh, submit in the budget time what we'd like to do. There are some other large events uh, that bring in tourism hotel stays uh, like Blink that will be coming forward and I support that as well. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm excited about it. Um, happy to move forward with this. And also in this uh, grant, I just wanna acknowledge that there is a smaller grant in the grant. So there's a smaller festival, 513 Relief Festival and uh, uh, Minister Taimba has been doing it for years. He's bringing in these vendors who also have to get hotels so that they can set up to be in. And many times they come in on a Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday. And once again, it's a cha-ching, cha-ching, cha-ching. So I'm happy to support this. Thank you. Portion is the 513 part. Um. Uh, the 513 Festival mm -hmm. is the part when you come out of the uh, stadium yeah. on Freedom Way. Um, and I don't know if he... So, I mean, what, as far as financially, what part of the... Uh, they said they would, they would help with some of the expenses of the 513 Festival. Because okay. the goal is, um, Madam President, as we have been saying, one of the goals is to have that music corridor. Mm -hmm. So that whole area, when you come out, will be the festival. You've got the Andrew Brady Center. You've got the 513 Festival. And you got the uh, Walk of Fame, so to kind of mm -hmm. keep the energy going there. Mm -hmm. um, so they will partner with 513 Festival. And that 513 Festival has been with them, I believe, two decades, 20 years. Will help get 513 Festival back up and going because they've been down mm -hmm. uh, two years as well. So that would, I think that's the good thing about this uh, grant, that they have some partnerships, like you said, for some of the smaller minority businesses that can participate with them as well. Okay. Madam um, President, if, yes. if I could just briefly, uh -huh. uh, the, that component was in the grant at $25,000. Okay, your question. thank you. Yeah. Commissioner Driehaus. Thank you. Um, yeah, I'm glad to see this item come forward. Um, as has been stated, this was part of the budget process. And, you know, remember back when we were um, deciding 
uh, and challenged uh, related to the sales tax increase uh, for the general fund. Um, at that time, the commitment was to shore up county services to make sure that people were being paid a fair wage and uh, hoping to track employees to the county because we were going to have a more robust budget for that purpose. There was also a commitment at that time to do some economic development work, um, whether it was out in the 49 jurisdictions or towards some of these bigger um, events that really create a lot of economic development opportunity for the county. And so um, as we were all contemplating the budget, um, I was happy to introduce a couple of those items to the mix um, related to not only the community development, which were up to 3 million for those grants, those revitalization grants out in the community with the 1 million impact grant, but also this 1.5 for larger investments towards these really big events that generate um, all this income for the county. And so um, I think it's a good idea. I think uh, it shows that the county wants to be a partner when it comes to these large events. The um, city has been in this space for a while. The county has not played a, a, as active a role as the city. And so I think this um, shows our commitment to be partners when it comes to the music festival, when it comes to Blink, when it comes to whoever else applies and is um, eligible for this money. Um, because it doesn't have to be the same group year after year. It could be, but it doesn't have to be. Um, and I do want to say on this particular item, um, I too have been going to the music festival back when it was the jazz festival many years ago. And I remember that because I had just had my daughter who is now 35. Uh, I went to this festival right after I had my daughter. Uh, that was probably not my best move because uh, I was still not in great shape, but I went anyway because I wanted to and uh, was sitting way up in the Red Stadium, way, way up in the Red Seas. But anyway, it was good fun and have attended a few times since then and think it is just a wonderful celebration uh, for the city. And so I'm happy to support the resolution. Yes, uh, I think the Santangels are on. They may want to say something. I'm not sure. On Zoom. Um, I don't know. Uh, this is Joe Santangelo. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Uh huh. Oh, great. Well, no, I would just like to say that I am very appreciative of your considering our request. And I'd like to say that it couldn't come at a better time. As you noticed, as you have, have all said, we, you know, we've been down for two years, uh, which has put quite a hardship on us. And what we're noticing this year in our startup is that, I mean, our costs are just skyrocketing. I mean, they are, they're going well and above from, you know, we went out and hired the most expensive artists that we've ever had on the festival in all of our 55 years. And I'm speaking about Janet Jackson, obviously. And in addition to that, we have a, a, a great lineup in addition to just her. and. Um, but so not only our artist costs, but all of our associated costs are dramatically increasing in this, this year. Um, if I could give you one quick example, um, last year, in addition to our general liability insurance, we buy uh, what I call cancellation insurance. So were there to be a, a terrible thunderstorm or whatever, a weather related event that would caused the event to be canceled, you know, we would be protected. Um, in 2019, the cost for that insurance was about $40,000. In 2022, the estimate I received is 128,000. So, you know, it, and this is the kind of thing straight across the board that we're looking at. We feel that our event staffing costs are gonna be way up this year because the only way we can get the number of people that we need to adequately staff the festival to make sure everyone is safe. And I'm always, uh, I've always been a proponent of more security rather than less um, that we need to pay, you know, a, a probably 20 to 30% more per hour to all of the people. So, you know, the timing of this couldn't be better from our point of view and once again, I would just like to say I'm very appreciative for uh, for being for being included in this, and I'm very appreciative for all three of you, county commissioners, uh, voicing your support for this. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Thank you so much for your comments. I think this large event grant is an example of uh, when we were looking at our budget, uh, we did not wanna leave any stone unturned. And as I said earlier, how we have helped everyone um, we've assisted everyone to kind of bring themselves up to almost where they used to be. So this just falls in line with what our priorities are as a commission. So I'd like to make a motion to adopt um, by leave one. Second. Commissioner Summer Dumas. Yes. Commissioner Reese. Yes. Commissioner Driehaus. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, commissioners. Um, by leave number two in your packet is a resolution awarding construction contracts for the concrete structures and park finishes uh, for phase 3C of the banks. You will remember uh, a few weeks ago, a month ago or so, um, we had to reject bids that came in for specific projects at the banks uh, because they were over the engineer's estimate. Phil Beck uh, did a, a great job uh, in leading the team in, a, in an effort to reform that, that package, get it back out on the street and get bids back in that were within um, uh, our toler tolerances on acceptance. So uh, Phil is here today to provide a little bit of background on uh, both of the contracts here, and to we ultimately will make a recommendation for the board to approve. Phil? Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Thank Good you. afternoon, commissioners. Good afternoon. Phil Beck, Hello. Banks Project Executive. Um, as Jeff mentioned, this is uh, it's kind of step two of three steps for this phase of the Banks Project. We are in the final days and weeks of finishing the foundation work uh, currently. Uh, that should be pretty well wrapped up uh, by the end of this month. Uh, so that sets the, the pile caps and the initial walls. And so this, um, this package that you're looking at today has two trade contracts. The first of the two takes off where the foundations left off. Uh, so this will bring up uh, the, the podium, which is a stair-stepping podium. As you know, we're, we're joining the upper elevation coming out of the Andrew J. Brady Music uh, Center and then stepping down to Marion Way and Elm Street, that elevation. It's a 14 foot differential. So the, the park, if you will, is designed with the stair step and the, and the ramp structure. So all that concrete work that I just described and then the second trade contract that's included here is the park itself. So all the park finishes basically taking the public uh, component of this to completion. And that includes all of the, um, anything that is required to then um, accept the, in, um, the uh, interactive elements for the Black Music Walk of Fame. And that will be the step three of three steps. So that is coming shortly. Okay. Thank you so much. I don't have any questions or comments, but Vice President uh, Reese. Yes, thank you. I'm excited that the bids came in um, the right way. I'm hopeful that I'm, I've been going down there. So I'm, you know, I see a lot of work being done on it and uh, moving. And so this will help us move uh, to that next phase to get what we need. So I, I'm excited about it and um, looking forward to passing this and looking forward to the interactive component. I guess my question is on the interactive, mm -hmm. when will that piece come? I'm hoping to get that to you within a week or so. Okay, and then that's the last phase and then everybody can get kind of yes. just keep moving. Yes, and everything will be under work. contract at that point. Okay, great, thank you. You indicated you're getting it to us in a week. What is getting, what, the plans, the design? for to us in a week? It's actually the, um, the uh, we're working with, con let me put this, way, working with consultants uh -huh. that aren't necessarily used to working in the public environment. So um, I just want to make sure we are, we're um, digging into all of the costs that are associated so that everything is transparent. That's, that's what we're in the process of doing so that we can then come to an agreement as a project team um, on, on a good, solid recommendation to you all to approve. So that would be the final cost you would get to us in a week? Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you. All right. Commissioner Drew. Yeah, Phil, can you just um, tell us when, it, I, so you've got kind of two things going on here. You've got the infrastructure being built and then you've got what's on top. How does what's on top interface with what's already there? And by that, I mean the park that is nearby and the finishes that are there. Um, are they consistent with what we have seen throughout the rest of the park? Yes, and, and they are also a slight departure. Um, so they are consistent in that it's the same materials. We're talking stainless steel railings, granite, um, um, 
you know, granite pavers, granite on vertical elements. Um, but in this case, this corner is sort of setting itself apart slightly and that some of the colors used are new and, and different, not radically, but you know, they, they set themselves apart. Uh, we have a water feature um, that uh, Parks has used in the past, as you know, particularly at, at uh, Vine and Walnut Street steps. Um, and so we, but they've sort of gotten away from those water features because uh, they can be problematic. So we're taking all of their lessons learned into the design of, of our water feature and, and incorporating that. Um, and then of course the, the interactive elements that will go into the park are completely new. Yeah, no, I, I understand that the interactive stuff will be very different from what the rest of the park looks like. I just, I know there is a common look or uh, by way of the materials that are used. I just wanna make sure that that common look um, is carried through to this and then the interactive elements will be in addition to, right? All that other, and will be very different from the rest of the park. I, I understand that. This was, cause I've been asked about um, some of the materials that are being used. I think you've mentioned the granite uh, and some of the other stuff. And I just, I, right. I assume that that's being carried through to this space. Yes, and as a matter of fact, um, you and I have an appointment tomorrow at two o'clock to okay. go over the materials. Um, go. I was gonna set those up in room 603 and I'm in the process of trying to schedule uh, a date and time uh, with the other commissioners to do the same thing. Um, I have renderings that show where the materials will go and then I have actual physical um, samples of the, the granite and we can put that next to the terrazzo that's used in the stars to kind of imagine what that look will be. Okay. Oh, okay. President, is that, were you done? I think so. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Better President, I just want to say, we may have a difference of opinion. I don't want the Walk of Fame to be bland. The park is bland. A lot of brown. I suffer from migraines. So you go down there, you got a brown river. You got a lot of brown, a lot of gray. The Walk of Fame is supposed to be a tourism attraction that has music and has attraction. And, it, and so I'm, I'm not, that's the reason that we didn't want um, the you know, parks in the city, they are not, that's why we wanted to get the deed. We went to get the deed. So I haven't had anybody call me from parks or anywhere else, but I just wanna be clear. I don't want a brown, dull, nothing that pops. It's just like Paul Brown Stadium or the, the Red Stadium. Red Stadium ain't all brown. Um, and so I just think that this has to have some more creativity. This cannot be just some, uh, which is more expensive actually, that material that's used for the Andrew. Andrew Brady, it's creative because the building, you're not looking at the ground, you're looking at the building. This, you will be looking at the ground. It's already, uh, the Walk of Fame, number one, is only a half an acre. We gave 196 and a half other acres for everybody else. It's only a half acre. And I just wanna be clear on this. I don't think it's the expert. I don't like it. I don't like all that brown down there. I don't want an Albert Sabin old convention center. Even the new part of convention center, they didn't go with the brown. The old part went with the brown. So I disagree with that. And I don't want the Walk of Fame to be dull it can't be seen. It's already enough that the majority of the cost of this Walk of Fame is not the Walk of Fame. It's the garage. The majority of the cost is on the garage. The Walk of Fame is only six million, and the underneath all that garage is almost thirteen million dollars for the garage. So please, I hope this will have flavor, because it's got to have flavor. That's what these musicians was about. Flavor. It's got to have some flavor, and it's got to be current. And I don't want it to be just some blue ribbon uh, brown and all. I mean, some people like it, I don't like it. The river's brown, the trees are brown right now. I wanna see some, some you know, we got, we're bringing, we're gonna pay a lot of money for Blink to come in to bring lights and all this great stuff. I want the Walk of Fame to be that on a permanent basis. So I do wanna put that out there. Um, 
you know, I put a lot into this. I'm down there all the time. I, 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 I don't went all the way up and down this. It's 198 acres and it's not one thing African-Americans really have except the Freedom Center. So it's only a half acre. And I would hope that this half acre, we're not gonna hide the Black Music Rock of Fame. We're not gonna dull it down. This is not meant to be Smell Park. This is not Smell Park. This is to be interactive and fun and colors and vibrancy. And the only thing we're gonna have is the ground. We're already in the floodplain. Someone came down there the other day, I think it was uh, a 3CDC, Leaper came down. Said, oh, you, you got, you in the floodplain. We, I mean, so please, I hope that we're not going to, dull, at least I'm not gonna support it, dulling it down. And I've done a lot of work on it. I want this to be something that people wanna come from around the world and it brightens your day and it lights up and it looks good. And I think uh, standards is a matter of opinion. I don't think that brown looked that good to me. I'm just, I'm gonna be honest with you. A brown river with brown, nah, it don't do much for me. So I just think it's a matter of opinion. I hope that um, the drawings that you provided us, I, I think staying in that circle would be a lot more appropriate. So I just wanna be on record. I wanna be out in the open. I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna be out in the open and I'm just gonna be honest. It's a matter of opinion. This is not Smell River Park. We done gave you 196 and a half other acres. This is only half an acre. And standards, you know, that's a matter of opinion. And I think this Can is I gonna clarify? be world class. Mm -hmm. Can I just to clarify my comments, um, I'm not talking about dull, nor am I talking about brown. I'm talking about quality. I, I wanna make sure that the quality that it has been used in um, the rest of, the uh, park is the same quality. And, and so up to, I, I don't know that standard is exactly the right word, but I don't want it to be any less than, um, you know, the quality of the rest of the park. And then the interactive elements obviously will be very different and, and energetic and lively and light. Um, but I just want to make sure that we're building this infrastructure uh, to the same quality that we've done the rest of the park. That's um, all I was yeah, saying. I'm not, I'm not. Yeah, no, no, I, I got you, but I want to clarify. Wait a minute, what? quality, that was a hit. Wait I got to just finish, say. Finish, please. Are, are, no, I, yeah, I, yeah, it's, yeah, it's not a, a, about the look of it at all. It's about the quality of the materials. Well, being well I just want to clarify that because everything I do is quality. I started quality and worked my way up. When we talk about these garages, Finley Market and everything, I've never heard the thing about what's the materials? Is it going to be quality? But when we get to the Walk of Fame, we ask about quality. So I want to be straight with this thing. Just because it's the Black Music Walk of Fame don't mean it ain't quality. This is going to be better quality. Better I'm quality. Just to be so helpful. I just want to, no, I just wanted to put that out there because I don't want it leaning out there like, oh, it's quality. We build stuff every day. Every week you bring me stuff. We building something. I ain't never heard about what is the materials. I don't know the materials over at Finley Market. I don't know if it's quality. I don't know the materials that we have on these other things. But I will tell you that it will be quality. And I don't want to have that question again, because I don't think this board, we have voted for anything that wasn't quality. And if it had anything to do with me, I'm just going to tell you my whole life, I started quality and worked my way up. This is not my first rodeo. So I just wanted to, but the look of it is important. The look and feel is what I was remember. Right. And I think the look and feel for all of us is important. And uh, whatever word we choose to use to, to make sure that it's something that we all agree on, because we all have to vote on it. As you, was, as you were saying earlier, you're going to meet with Commissioner Driehaus. You'll be meeting with both of us. And if we yes. see something we don't like or would like to have enhanced or whatever, yes. that we certainly can make that suggestion. That's the purpose of, uh, of the meeting. So yes, there's um, time to make adjustments. if need. Yeah, absolutely. So whatever we do, uh, the county, we want high quality. Um, so it. and nothing is void of that, including the Walker thing. Um, I'd like to make a motion uh, to approve by leave two, which would award the construction contracts. Second, Commissioner Summer Dumas. Yes, Commissioner Reeves. Yes, Commissioner Drehill. Yes, thank, thank you. you, Commissioners. Uh huh. By leave three. There are, um, Madam President. Uh, by leave number three. Uh, is a resolution authorizing the county administrator to enter into a first agreement, first amendment to the agreement. Uh, with the Council on Aging of Southwestern Ohio regarding the use of senior services tax levy proceeds. As the board knows, we have an agreement uh, with Council on Aging 
that relates to the use of the of the uh, levy proceeds that are derived from uh, the senior services levy. Um, uh, the amendment here is specifically for two purposes. One is to uh, add home workforce recruitment strategies and also a program uh, at the direction of the board also included in the 2022 budget uh, for uh, utility assistance and home modification services. Uh, this is included as an amendment in the, in the uh, services agreement with Council on Aging. Uh, Lisa Webb is here. Um, and Lisa had presented on this uh, several weeks back. So this is the culmination of that work. I believe it is consistent uh, with the presentation provided by Lisa a few weeks ago. Um, it was ready as of yesterday, essentially, and we discussed it and um, uh, wanted to bring it by leave today for the board's consideration as uh, Council on Aging, I believe, has said that they are ready at the approval once we fire the starting gun here to start serving senior residents and we didn't want to wait any uh, any day longer than we needed to in order to get that done. So Lisa, I'll turn it over to you if there's anything to, to add and to the board for questions. Absolutely. This is the senior utility program that was presented to the commissioners last month of the million dollars, million $25,000 that was um, allocated in the senior services levy to fund the pilot of this program for this year. Uh, it provides one-time utility assistance payments of up to $500 and home modifications for Hamilton County residents age 60 plus, regardless of disability and living arrangement, if they are under 300% of poverty and not eligible for other assistance programs. Uh, one of the key pieces there just to note as we're launching this program is regardless of living arrangement, which means if you are living with, uh, with a family member and are not on the deed for the property or on the lease arrangements, you could still qualify for this program, which is very unique from other programs, as well as the uh, higher income eligibility requirements or, or bracket available. Uh, it also includes marketing services and outreach services by a local grassroots organization to go out in the community and try to get more people enrolled in this program, to do as many as we can with the amount of funding that we have allocated. Uh, there's also one other small modification to this amendment as well, which allows for Council on Aging to spend some of their funding on home care workforce recruitment, which has been a struggle for them recently and allows them to focus on that. That is what we have prepared. That's the amendment. The only addition I would add is I've reached out to COA um, and they have a dedicated phone line that they're going to be using for enrollment in this program. You can call the COA other lines, but if you call 743-9000, you will get directly uh, speaking with agents that can enroll you and do all the criteria and eligibility for this program specifically. That is great. Thank you so much for your presentation. I want to thank you yesterday for the meeting we mm -hmm. had together. You were fantastic as it relates to the, the levies and, and clarification. And I can't wait to pass this. Mm -hmm. um, seniors, we know, need so much additional help. And then the how you qualify is always so sticky. So this is, we, we're more lenient on this. I was wondering as far as the money is in there for marketing and advertisement, who would actually be doing that with the Council, uh, Council on, on Aging. Aging has contracted with, um, it's slipping me, SOAC, thank you, uh -huh. SOAC for the grassroots organization. Okay, okay, Fanta, this is great, and mm -hmm. we wanted it as and a And Council board. on Aging is ready, they've been getting phone calls, they've been hearing yeah. about it through the media, so it's getting right. out there, people have been calling COA already, so they've been cataloging all of those individuals, so once this is approved, they will be able to launch right away. That's great, thank you so much for your work, to you. Vice President Reese. Thank you. This is awesome. Thank you for your work. Um, uh, Madam President and Commissioner Driehaus, uh, we, I think we had a uh, staff meeting where they got a chance to present and some mm -hmm. of the seniors did come down. Um, and so I guess this is the step of, I think we gave, all of us gave some input and there were a few tweaks. Um, so I'm excited to get this started. Uh, the only thing I would ask when we get the phone number and uh, somehow we'll all of us will have it, but also get it out on our website. Mm -hmm. So uh, we have some work to talking with Bridget Doherty. To get oh, great. Right yes. Away. So I'm excited about this. Uh, this something came from our seniors. And I just think this is a very positive thing for seniors who haven't been able to be eligible for help mm -hmm. uh, with the CARES or the American Rescue uh, dollars for their uh, utilities. Mm -hmm. And I think it's just great, this partnership with Council on Aging, uh, as well as SOAC that can go in and also be one-on-one -on -one with helping seniors know about this service. So I'm excited about it and uh, supportive and ready to get started as soon as you get the phone number out to us. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Commissioner Driehaus. 
I'm excited about this too. I'm happy to support it. Um, can we put that phone number on our website? I wonder. I know Bridget's not in the room, but sure we could. Yeah, yeah. let's let's. Yeah, make I sure just got that, that today, so I'm happy yeah, to push that that's out. All pushed over. out far and wide. So CLA also does qualifications for a lot of other assistance programs too. So if there's anything else out there they qualify for, they'll definitely be directing them right. to that as well. Thank you. Thanks for bringing this mm -hmm. to us. Thank you so much. I'd like to make a motion very proudly of Byleaf Three to approve Byleaf Three. Second. Commissioner Summer Dumas. Yes. Commissioner Reed. Yes. Commissioner Dreehouse. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we'll go back to our regular agenda items. Our uh, engineer has been waiting patiently. Eric Beck, welcome. Good afternoon. Um, just two items and for you today. Item number one is a resolution between the city and the county to extend our bridge agreement uh, with the city. This extension would be would take it till December 31st, 2026. This agreement's been in place for over 20 years. It, it authorizes um, the county engineer to pay $1 million out of the municipal road funds annually to maintain the county bridges within inside the city limits. Hmm. Okay, thank you. Are there any, when you say $1 million out of our road Municipal fund? road funds. Right. Yeah. So the, the resolution, I don't have it with me, but it has in there where that 1 million is coming out of the road from. Correct. Okay. Vice President Reese. No question. No no question. Make a motion to approve item one. Second. Commissioner Summer Dumas. Yes. Commissioner Reese. Yes. Commissioner Dreehouse. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Item number two is a uh, vacation request from Sycamore Township. It's uh, uh, submitting uh, the county engineer's report to for you for to receive for the record. Um, we will contact utilities and uh, the adjoining property owners. We've reviewed it and uh, it, it is eligible to be vacated. So this did come from the trust township trustees. Um, if they, we've sent them a letter with the requirements when we get all that information back, should we get that back and it's acceptable, then we'll bring it for a hearing. Okay, thank you so much. Any questions? Make a motion to receive for the record item two. Second. Commissioner Summer Dumas. Yes. Commissioner Reese. Yes. Commissioner Dreehouse. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. We'll move forward to our consent agenda items, um, items three through 14, just a general summary. Um, let's see, we have uh, grants that were allocated that if we approve to probation, environmental services, and the Justice Center facility improvement for 10,000. Ten million, I mean, and I can put my glasses on. Then we have, um, I'm sorry, so for ten million, bid awards and contracts uh, also are authorized and executed by our purchasing uh, department for the month of March for three million. Um, and then JFS uh, has an agreement with um, Aramark for food service, uh, twenty eight hundred. Easter seals, uh, if approved, will receive. Um, Ten thousand dollars for their services that they conduct with Job and Family Services. Um, also, there are two replacement vehicles that JFS is uh, asking for um, for thirty-eight thousand thirty-eight nine. Um, and let's see what else sticks out. Um, maybe item eleven might stick out a little bit. Uh, we are appointing our our new clerk of uh, courts, clerk of county clerk in the office. See, you were looking at me and um, uh, Miss Leslie Irvy, and we may say a little bit more after that, but uh, item 11. And then item 12, we have an agreement through um, how many county sheriffs and job and family services uh, for criminal screening for $720,000. And then 100,000 more for group home services through JFS. Um, I would just like to make a comment about item 11. Um, and then also we have 14, uh, which is a consent item on their Hamilton County Municipal Court annual report. Um, but um, Leslie Hervey has been our interim clerk for, for just a little while since um, Jackie Paniota left. Um, and we went through a thorough uh, interview process. We had about 150 applicants and it came, narrowed it down to um, half a dozen, and then she uh, interviewed along with uh, two other finalists, and we're happy uh, if, if approved. 
we're happy to have her become our permanent clerk of uh, the board. So I will open it up if you have any questions or comments on the consent items. Uh, thank you. Um, thank you, Madam President. Um, I just want to say I, I thought the interview process that uh, the three of us had, I want to thank uh, HR uh, for putting that together along with uh, our administrator, uh, Jeff Aluto, um, and um, had a very good interview process. I want to congratulate Leslie. I uh, did a very good interview and um, just happy to have you as our clerk. Uh, so um, just wanted to, to highlight that. That was my first time going through that type of process. And I thought it was a very good process that the three of us uh, were a part of and helped lead. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to um, put out, I haven't put together a, a motion or anything yet, but I wanted to put it out there. I know we've been talking a lot about energy efficient cars and those kind of things. And every week we are, um, you know, asked to approve purchasing of different vehicles and fleet. And I don't know, I wanted to see maybe uh, our administrator, if he could maybe uh, get something together for uh, all three of us to look at and see, is there anything that we could be doing as it relates to as we're beginning to buy new cars? Or is there uh, availability to find uh, these electric cars to start to look at our fleet and be able to include them in the fleet and start turning some of this over? A little bit better. Um, so I um, don't have a motion today, but I did want to uh, put that on the table and maybe there's something that our administration can at least look at and maybe uh, provide a plan to, uh, to us to look at to see if we can begin to do that. Because every week I know we're buying uh, different vehicles uh, for different departments. And I, I know that maybe uh, the sheriff's department, that might be difficult because uh, we want those cars to be able to go really fast. Uh, but maybe as some of these other cars, we might be able to start to look at, uh, you know, what, what would that cost? What's the long term? What's the short term? Uh, so that we could begin to have more, uh, more of these electric style cars in our fleet. Uh, if, if possible, I'd like to at least get some kind of report and maybe at a staff meeting or something, uh, something can be presented to us in the, in the future. Thank you. Thank you. And as we look at purchasing more electric cars, also, uh, we need to include the training component of it, because as um, Mr. Beck was saying, a lot of people are not trained in how do you maintain those those cars, but the, it will be happening. That's for sure. OK, did you have any comments? Commissioner? Drew? Yes, I do. Um, I wanted to comment on item number three. Um, this is the item, the $10 million item where we are getting to this issue of safety over in the Justice Center. Uh, we've had some challenges with holes in the windows. And so this item is the allocation or, or the, the start down the road to, to bring that allocation to the county so we can start to fix those windows and other, some other safety concerns at the Justice Center. So I want to thank the administration for bringing this as quickly as possible to us because I think uh, we're all concerned about the safety of the inmates in addition to the corrections officers over at the Justice Center. And I also wanted to congratulate Leslie Hervey. Um, welcome is not the right word since you've been with us for I don't know how many years, but uh, we really appreciate all your efforts trying to keep us in line and trying to keep <laughs> our agendas in line. Um, and you have been a, a real asset to the county and I'm thrilled that you're gonna continue on in the role of the county clerk. Thank you. Did you want to speak or did you? No, she said no. <laughs> okay. okay, I'd like to make a motion motion to approve items three through 14. Second. Commissioner Summer Dumas. Yes. Commissioner Reese. Yes. Commissioner Driehaus. Yes. Thank you. We have before us an executive session. Um, I'd like to make a motion to go into executive session pursuant to Ohio revised code section 121.2. 22G3 to meet with an attorney for the public body concerning pending litigation. Second. Commissioner Summer Dumas? Yes. Commissioner Reese? Yes. Commissioner Treehouse? Yes. 